Welcome to my channel. Uh, this is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John. Today I have a new album by Mushuga. The album is called Immutable. Released on April 1st, 2022. So in this video, I'll give a little background on the band. I'll talk about the songs, give my final thoughts, and I'll give a score at the end. So Mushuga is an extreme uh, metal band. They're from Sweden, and that's like one of my favorite countries uh, for metal. But they're kind of hard to describe. <clears throat> Their sound is uh, sometimes called like progressive metal and it's also like a subgenre called Gent. The first time I heard this band and I didn't really get into them that much. I kind of thought like the song sounded the same. It kind of had like this like formulaic sound. Like the typical Meshuggah sound is like with like the bass, the guitar and the drums kind of all playing in unison. Then there's like the lead guitar playing those melodies like they play them up high in the neck. And like the bass, doom, 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 doom. So, you know, it's, it's all something like that. But you know, when you listen to like these like uh, songs over and over, it, you know, you understand the complexity behind the music, and you know, you gotta like listen to this band, you know, multiple times to kind of get into them. So that's kind of like what the uh, what I uh, felt about the band. You know, they do play like these like polyrhythms, complex arrangements. And the band does have a very big uh, fan base, so I am interested in learning about them. Immutable, it's their ninth album. So the album was preceded by three singles called uh, The Abysmal Eye, Light the Short and Fuse, and I Am the Thirst. Now, I did listen to these songs prior to the release of the album, and I thought they were just like, okay. You know, you know I think the singles are not like the best songs. This is like the type of um, band you kind of need to like hear the whole album to kind of like enjoy, you know, the band. But it is a long album, you know, 66 minutes, 13 songs. So let me talk about them. First song, Broken Cog, has some like classic Meshuggah sound. Heavy downtune guitars, bass playing in unison with the drums. Lead guitar playing, they played like those spacey melodies. The vocals are very kind of like whispery at first, but the song moves at a mid pace. The guitar riffs get more complex, like around the three minute mark, but I don't know, decent opener. Then the abysmal eye. This one has some more complex riffing and time signatures, faster paced than the previous song, and it kind of creates this like this like wall of sound. The vocals are very harsh in the in the song. The drumming is a little more complex than the previous song, and it's kind of like they're doing some like two-handed tapping during the solo. I thought that was pretty cool. Then light the shortening fuse, another one of the singles. It had a classic sound with a riff. Kind of sounds simple, but it is a little more technical like the more you listen closely. The song continues with their progressive metal rhythms, the pounding drum beat. After around two minutes, it kind of like incorporates some like string bands, kind of makes it a little more interesting. And Phantoms, this is where the album starts to sound a little different. And, you know, the riffs have like a distorted tone similar to thrash metal, but the riff uh, being played is very complex. You know, they use some palm muting in the verse section. Um, and, you know, the vocals, are, as always, are heavy. Lead guitar plays these little, those, like, futuristic riffs, you know, behind the rhythms. And the song gets faster and more complex around the two and a half minute mark. Ligature marks. This one has a sound uh, similar to, like, the first song on the album with the heavy guitars, like, in unison with the drums and bass. And the lead guitar is playing these, like, spacey melodies. They use, like, these heavy string bends, creating some deep, thick riffs. God he sees in mirrors. Now on this song the riffs get much more complex. You know the vocals are very harsh. It kind of seems like the drums are playing one rhythm, the guitar and bass are playing another rhythm, and they are very technical. Also very lots of uh, futuristic guitar, you know leads and guitar solos, and they seem to be doing like their own rhythm. You know last thirty seconds is almost like silent, kind of like prepares for the second half of the album which goes to They Move Below, and this is a nine minute long instrumental. Now the placement of the song on the album kind of gives a, like the listener like a break from those complex and heavy songs. And it's more of an atmospheric song, it sets up like the second half of the album. Now it starts off slow, like with acoustic guitars, but it does get heavy after about two and a half minutes. And it's an instrumental, there's like many different sections. And it's actually a song that I, I liked a lot because I, I think, um, you know, this band playing this style as an instrumental, you know, they do it very well. Then Kaleidoscope, again, the same type of uh, Meshuggah sound. 
Actually, the intro reminded me a little of corn, but that's until the vocals come in. But the main riff, it's just complex. Time signature changes, so like when the vocals come in, that's pretty cool. And a little different, it has like a short guitar solo in the middle of the song and some faster tempos. It's a four minute song, and one of those songs that, you know, it doesn't follow the whole like verse, chorus, verse. This is not that type of band. They kind of like just like do their own thing, you know, like other bands like Go Here, and they kind of have their own structures. Um, Black Cathedral, short two minute instrumental, and this has like that like fast, like tremolo picking, almost sounds like death metal. And it is a short break from that typical sound. Um, and it goes into the next song, I Am That Thirst. This one's very technical, it has like the lead and rhythm guitars playing different melodies. Drums playing complex like polyrhythms and you do hear the pounding drums, that's with most of the other songs. The Fault List, slightly heavier and faster, continues with their signature sound. They do a time signature change, you know, like the vocals come in and you know, they do that often with their sounds and often some different like vocal styles. Then Army of the Preposterous. This one I like a lot. It has like this fast machine gun riffing and, you know, lots of energy. And this one actually stands out amongst the other songs. So maybe like one of my favorite tracks. And last song, Past Tense. It's slower. It's an, atm it's an atmospheric. It's an instrumental and very haunting tone. Kind of like a nice break from the typical sound. You know, you got one uh, guitarist playing uh, like the the rhythms with those like arpeggios, then another uh, guitarist playing like a clean tone like with the lead guitars. Nice laid back song to close the album. So now my final thoughts for this album and this band. So I actually think if you're a newcomer to the band, it might take a while to get into them. Like I said before, my first impression of the band was everything kind of sounded the same, but as you listen to songs over and over, you start to recognize that they are very complex, very technical. It's a band that does have a very a large fan base. It's an album that, to me, it was like, okay. And I kind of like wanted to like confirm my feelings. So I watched a couple of other reviews and I watched like some rankings. And, you know, most of the other channels did say it was, you know, not one of the best, but a good album. You know, in the rankings, you know, this one was kind of more towards the bottom or more middle to the bottom. But anyway, I just wanted to get a better understanding and get other opinions, you know, because I am new to the band. But my uh, final score is 7 out of 10. Not bad. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Up next, uh, anniversary reviews. I got a lot. ZZ Top, The Cult, White Snake, The Clash, and Judas Priest. I'll see if I can get them all done this week. If not, I'll like, get the other ones done during the weekend. Please remember, like, comment, subscribe. I will stick another video right there to check out. And uh, see you in the next one.